So today we're going to try and update the instrument cluster on a 2017 Countryman from the analog dashes here to the new toy that I have here. So here's what we've got here. Uh, three cables uh, that seem to go in. There's nothing else there. Uh, let's see here. Part information. So it's a pretty simple physically uh, thing to install. Um, not much to it. And it goes in with two 20 Torx screws that are located on here. So what we're going to do is take this off with the Torx screws, unplug the cables that go on the back of that, and uh, plug them into here. The real business is going to be with the coating that we're going to use ESIS for. Now, again, just uh, so everyone's familiar with what I'm working with here, this is a 2017 Countryman uh, F60 series. Uh, there have been installs for the digital dash uh, for the F55, F56 series as well. Should be the same exact thing, assuming that you have similar features. So looking at the vehicle here, I have the heads-up display. I have the uh, uh, Harman Kardon system with navigation. It's the full kit here. Uh, so I basically have a, a loaded uh, system here that's going to have all the cables that are needed for the back of this. Your mileage may vary if you don't have similar uh, functions and equipment on your vehicle. With that said, let's dive in and see how this goes. Of course, when working with anything electronic, the first thing we're always going to do, uh, whether we need to or not, uh, is unplug the battery. So I'm just going to pop off this panel, get the battery unplugged, dive right back into the car. Again, pretty straightforward it seems. All you need is a Torx size 20. Uh, screw here is... All right, two screws are out, so now we just pull it out here. And so what you'll notice is the two holes right here, they're actually covered by little plugs. And so you just pull those out, a little screwdriver or something. I just put something in the hole and just kind of pried it out, and it popped right out. It's just a ribbed little cover that protects the Torx 20 size screws. So very easy to pull out, just make sure you get at those first before you remove those. So now looking at it, we've got the cables here on the back side. What I'm going to try and do, and it does look like I have one, two, and three, just like it's shown on the back of the digital dash. I'm going to go ahead and remove these real quick and uh, move on to the next step. Alright, this one looks tricky. And it is not. It is super easy. Alright, there we go. So, what I've got here is the back of the original panel and then comparing it to the back of the new panel here. All right. And there it is. That is the main or the physical install of the dash and again, little plastic caps put those in there where they belong. <laughs> this might be the hardest thing I do because my hands are not that small. Okay, so here we go. Taking the plastic off now, you can actually see, you know, when it's dark, everything's off. Kind of see the tachometer there, the fuel gauges on the other side. So now what we're gonna do is pull out the laptop, fire up ESIS, and uh, cross our fingers. So this comes the more difficult part. Uh, I have not had great success coding uh, when it came to the full screen car play over here. Uh, went through a few <laughs> trial and error runs. So I'm uh, gonna take my time, found some step-by-step uh, -step instructions on the North American uh, motoring forum. Gonna follow that to a T and hopefully uh, everything goes smoothly. But uh, you guys will follow me along with that journey and see whether I get it right or screw the pooch. Okay, so here we're going to fire up uh, ESIS and dive into it. And it's taking its time. So we'll just fast forward to this. So we're in and we're going to go ahead and connect to the vehicle. Again, it's important uh, depending on what you're doing that you connect the right way. Uh, so find your vehicle uh, model. Mine in ESIS is F. 056. I work off the F56 series even though my vehicle is an F60. Uh, that's just the way ESIS works. So I'm going to scroll down here, find the current version, 
And I like to use the newer of the two versions. You'll see most vehicles have two versions. Never use the direct, always use the one above it. So I'm gonna use that one. And I noticed that the VIN right now is unavailable. So uh, what I'm gonna do is check my cable, make sure everything is tight and just realize, nope, cable's not tight. That's why I have nothing on VIN. If you don't have anything in your VIN box, You'll want to check your connections as well. So refreshed it, boom, there we go. Now it's important to make sure that the gateway URL uh, address matches exactly the TCP from the VIN. So just taking a look at that, marrying it up against the gateway, and uh, go ahead and hit connect once you realize that's all good. So now we're in, and we're gonna go ahead and follow these instructions again provided by uh, forum member on North American motoring um, really helpful it was step by step and so that's what we're gonna do uh, right now read the S uh, read the FA and then save it and I'm just going to name it something so I know exactly what it is when I look back on this uh, down the road I'll know which FA this was for today's date and then uh, you know what let me also call it what I'm actually working on so digital cluster there, perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get into it and by editing the FA. So not something I've done before, looking forward to not breaking this. So again, taking it step by step. Next step is to change uh, something to 0320. Uh, I don't know how to say the word, but you'll see as I navigate through here, uh, starts with the Z, there it is on the screen, nope. It's not in there, so opening up the type. There it is. That one right there, right now is at 0317, which was the original model year of my vehicle, 2017. Changing that to 0320, perfect. Now I'm gonna move down the Salapa element. Um, and what I'm going to do here is actually go into the folder, click the folder of the Salapa element there, the yellow folder. And there you have all of these numbers here. I want to edit this and add 6WB, that's 6 Whiskey Bravo, in the alphanumeric order along with everything else. You'll see everything is in an alphanumeric order. I want to put that where it belongs, which is right after 6UH. So I'm going to type that in there. Make sure it's all caps. Add a comma, no spaces. Everything looks good there. So now what I'll do is go ahead and move on up right click at the top of the fa tree uh not that top i need to hit calculate fp but it's grayed out here so i'm going to move down here let's see calculate fa just hit that let's try that one there boom that's there go ahead and select that it calculated it and now next thing i need to do is hit the save icon up there at the top and then the back button, the green back button, over on the far left. Again, following these instructions to a T from the forums. Yes, I do want to reload it according to the instructions. So, so far, so good. Haven't broken anything. Um, everything's looking good here so far. So next thing I need to do is activate the FA. Once I do that, I'm going to go down and read the ECU. I know this is a big debate depending on what vehicle you have, whether it's read VCM, read ECU. The instructions say read ECU, and aha, it worked. So I'm going to scroll down now and find Combi in the ECU tree, K-O-M-B-I. So working my way down here, which of these folders, most of it's in alphabetical order. So I'm just going to keep scrolling. And boom, there it is, perfect. So now what I need to do is click on that and then detect CAF for SWV, SWE, which is over here on the right side. Okay, all right, I'm gonna click that. And, oh, error. Errors are never good. Errors are definitely never good with coding. What did I do? Let me go back and look at the instructions here, okay. Okay, so good news, sorta, maybe, we'll find out here together. Uh, I was using an older version of the PSDZ data, uh, Lite, so 
Uh, in the instructions, they recommended 4.24.31. I found a newer version uh, past that online, used the light version of that. So now I've removed the older PSDZ data. Uh, I've put the new version in that I just recently downloaded. And now I'm going to go back into eSys and try this all over again, starting from scratch. As you can already see, the uh, F56, these are newer versions of it. So I have the 2007-545. Uh, that's the one I connected. Again, connecting to Gateway. So already off to a, to a different start here. Hopefully that's good news. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming that that was my issue. So I'm going to save the FA as something different, maybe just version B. Um, because again, I don't know what it's uh, looking, what it looks like now that I already messed with it before. So I'm just going to go through the motions of the instructions again. I want to edit it. Let's go in and change that date again if I have to. So I'm going to navigate down into the type. And look at that. It's already at 0320, so it did recognize that change. How about the Solapa element here? Uh, and no. The 6WB is missing from this. So I need to go ahead and put that back in there by hitting edit. And there we go. Make sure the comma, no spaces. And now we're going to move up and right click and calculate the FP on the FA folder. Boom, there it is. And now I'm going to just trust but verify, make sure that stuff did stick. Going back into type. And going to take a look and make sure that the changes I just made were there before I hit save, which interesting. I can't hit save yet. Huh. But it's never simple until you find it. All right, the date's good. Salapa's missing again, the 6WB. All right, third time's a charm, right? Let's try it again. 6WB, comma. Aha, wait, what is that? Apply changes. Apply changes, people. Right there, that little icon right there. Now I've got my save icon. I can hit calculate FP. I can hit save. I can hit back, just as the instructions say I should. All right, we're looking good, and the 6WB did stay. Great. Yes, please, reload it into coding. All right, we're trucking along now. Things are looking good. All right, so again, I'm going to activate the FA and then read the ECU. Let's see here. All right, combi here at this step again. Going to cl click detect CAFD. All right, and that brings this menu. Perfect. So now I need to find the I step that matches the I step of my vehicle, which, as you see over there, is 2007545. That is the current I step of my vehicle after I updated it to use full screen CarPlay. So I'm going to find that here on the selection, and uh, there it is. And so just doing a little trust but verify, select that one, hit OK. And then that should be the ticket. This is where I couldn't get to before, so great. It took me to the top of the ECU tree, so I'm just going to scroll back down to Combi now. Now I'm going to hit code there on the far right. Uh, according to the instructions, that's the next step. And wow, okay, now you can't see it because we've got the screen here, but the digital cluster is going all sorts of good nuts, not bad nuts, good nuts. Um, things are updating. I'm losing a lot of the errors that I had here before. Okay, so that's it. It's good. And let's fire the car up and see what it does. No error screens, that's great. Let's uh, hit the uh, computer button over here and let's see what it does. So, looks like the same functions that I had before um, on the analog dash. Showing the RPMs. And so you'll notice that it looks like the needle is not digital. It's actually analog, which is nice. 
So doesn't seem like you're gonna get that digital lag. Uh, the screen itself is digital. So what I'd like to do now here is come over here and see if I can actually adjust some of the settings that I had here before. So let's see here. Instrument panel, there we go. Let's see if this will play nice. So I don't want the green info. I definitely want the range. Current consumption, I never wanted that. Average speed, um, let's see here, get rid of that. I guess I can, no, I don't want that toggle, because these are the ones that'll toggle through the computer. Um, not very interested in that mistaken and so all right so all of these seem to still at least be options I can come in and trigger and yes perfect so there's that that's great um, and so the last thing I'd like to do here is check and see if when I come over here and select units all right so I'm currently living in Europe um, so what I like to do is have my distance in kilometers and when I switch that, now look at that, I have both kilometers and miles per hour, which I don't know how interesting that's going to be. <laughs> Two at the same time, but uh, up here it does have kilometers per hour. It might be hard to see that. Um, and the heads up display, but I really only use a heads up display for road trips. This is what I have 90% of the time. And previously on the analog, if you've ever used it and you've used the, um, uh, the speedometer uh, on the analog it was down here and it was one of the options that you could toggle through but now it's nice that it's here in the center screen the entire time and it's changed the odometer as you see here to kilometers as well uh, I'll just toggle it here as you can see back to miles per hour switch it to kilometers I can switch miles per gallon to liters per hundred kilometers which uh, I don't know how to do that math in my head, so I always leave it as MPG. Uh, but yeah, do have the functionality here to change all the temperatures. You see change at the Celsius, which I use quite a bit. Although Fahrenheit comes second nature. There's a different sound to the turn signals uh, from the analog dash. Just something a little subtle, but I thought I'd point it out. It's more subdued, more uh, definitely softer, uh, really nice sound to it uh, than before. Not to say that the uh, previous sound was bad or anything, but uh, did notice that the sound is different. Obviously, it's coming from this new dash. Uh, and as you can see here, it toggles through all the gears. And you'll see the little uh, triangle warning sign. That's because, you know, I, I had the battery pulled. And when you pull the battery, uh, it resets the clock every time. I have not set that yet. so. Um, might be a good idea to do that. <laughs> to, won't bore you here on the video with that, but uh, just some gee whiz there with the uh, turn signal. Um, notice switching from sport to mid to green, little race car, go-kart there. That's pretty fun. All right, guys, again, thanks for tuning in.